Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kados Edge 2 ARM PC. Now, previously on the channel, we've taken a look at the Edge 2, but uh, they do offer a PC kit for this, and until now it actually wasn't available, but they were kind enough to send one over so we could take a quick look at it. And uh, when it comes down to it, if you're not familiar with the Edge 2, this is a very powerful ARM-based single board computer. It utilizes a high-performance rock chip CPU and a really awesome GPU. I mean, this is capable of running a full desktop operating system. We can run Android, we can run native Android games, and emulators up to PS2 on this super tiny single board computer. Along with the Edge 2 PC kit, we're also going to be taking a look at a couple extra accessories that they offer over on their website. We'll get to those in a second. But with the Edge 2 ARM PC kit, you're obviously going to get the Edge 2. We also get the Edge 2 Maker kit, the Edge 2 Active Cooling kit, which is pre-installed on the one I have here, and the Edge 2 Do-It-Yourself case. And by the way, they are offering this kit in two different RAM and storage variants. You can pick up the lower end model with 8GB of RAM and 32GB of eMMC 5.1 storage. Or you can go all out with the Pro model, which I have here. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of eMMC 5.1 storage. Now, having 16 gigabytes of RAM in a single board computer is actually really awesome, but it's definitely overkill for a lot of people out there. And I'd go with the 8 gigabyte model. You can run Android just fine on it, or a Linux based desktop operating system would be fine with 8 gigs. And real quick, just a rundown on the key features here. For the CPU, we've got that RK3588S. It's an 8-core ARM SoC, up to 2.25 GHz. For the GPU, we've got the Mali G610 MP4. It's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5. We've got one full-size USB 3.1 port, one full-size USB 2.0 port, and we've also got two USB Type-C ports here. One is only going to support power delivery to power the board up, but the other one supports power delivery and DisplayPort 1.4. So this actually works in alt mode. If you've got a display that supports USB-C video in and power out, all you'll need is a single cable to get this up and running on that display. One of my favorite things about the Kados Edge 2. The first thing we're going to be taking a look at in this video is the Edge 2 I.O. module. Now, unfortunately, this will not fit with the case, but if you've already got the Edge 2 kind of purchased it separately, then this will come in handy because this actually actually adds an SD card reader. We've got these four white connectors, 16 GPIO pins, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now when it comes to the white connectors, we've got one four pin that'll work as USB host. We've got one two pin connector that'll work as an analog speaker output. We've got another two pin connector which will work as analog microphone input. And we can also set up a dual channel IR receiver with this IO module. So it can definitely add some functionality to the Edge too. And in order to connect it, we're just going to plug these ribbon cables in. And this will attach to the bottom of the board. So you can actually just kind of screw this down and secure it. Sits on here really nicely, but unfortunately with the new case, this I.O. module just won't fit. Really wish it would, but unfortunately we just don't have the room. Now it's time to move over to the new case, and this is something I've been waiting on for a little while. They've had renders up on their website for a while now, and initially I thought it was going to be aluminum. Unfortunately, it's plastic, but I'm going to tell you, it is worth it, and it looks great. Seven pogo pins here. We've got some strong magnets. I was actually surprised at how strong these are. You could stick this, you know, vertically on something metal, and it would stay up. We've got the seven pads on the bottom, so we can actually use a different I.O. expansion device while it's inside of the case. And the top of the unit just looks really good. I think they've done a great job with the design on this. And you know, in the past, I've tested a lot of different cases, be it plastic, aluminum, or whatnot for different single board computers. Personally, I think this is the best looking case for a single board computer that I've seen so far. And remember, if you do pick up the PC kit, it's going to come with the active cooling kit, which has a really nice aluminum heat sink and a blower style fan on it. And remember, the fan here is PWM. Whether you're running Android or Linux, it's fully adjustable from software. And on the Edge 2, there are three physical buttons on the unit itself. They're fully accessible with the case installed. And you're just basically going to kind of slide this right down in there. Make sure all of our ports are lining up. And two screws are going to hold it in from the bottom. These screws are actually going to kind of hold down the heat sink inside of the unit also. So just make sure you have those out before you put the bottom on. And this will really only go on one way. It's going to make contact with those pogo pins. Snap it in. And yeah, I mean, this looks so good. I think they've done an amazing job designing this case for the Edge too. 
And once we have our screws in, we can add the rubber strip. This isn't going to slide around on the table or anything like that. And uh, over here on the left hand side, we've got our power button, run button, and reset button, fully accessible. Plus, all of the LEDs on the board are visible once this is inside of the case. And of course, all of our main I.O. ports are accessible. We've got those dual USB Type-C ports, two USB ports, and full-size HDMI. So yeah, I think it looks great. Got a futuristic design, minimalistic design. It would have been nice if it was aluminum, but you know, this plastic here wasn't really going to help with cooling. We've already got a pretty beefy cooling system on the Edge 2 already. And the final new accessory we're going to be taking a look at is the Edge 2 Station. Now, this actually isn't available for uh, order over other website just yet, but it will be soon. And basically, what we have here is a docking station. I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, with the new Edge 2 case, it's going to magnetically attach. It'll line up these pogo pins, and it's going to add the addition of Ethernet, another USB Type-C port, and the 3.5mm audio jack. I thought this was pretty cool because uh, basically it just magnetically attaches and it lines right up. I mean, when you've got this case installed, remember we've got magnets in the bottom of that also. Just kind of snaps right on there. And now we've got access to Ethernet, another USB-C, and 3.5. And I'd say, at least in my opinion, Ethernet was the main thing missing from the Edge 2 in the first place. I understand why they did it. They wanted to keep that form factor down. But, you know, adding an accessory like this really does help out for somebody who wants to use a wired connection instead of the built-in Wi-Fi 6. So like I mentioned, we do have a few different operating systems that we can run on the Kados Edge 2. And first up, we've got Android. This is the tablet version. We're running Android 12. I'm not sure if Android 13 is available yet. I actually haven't checked for an update. But when it comes to this operating system running on the board with the Rock Chip 3588, not a problem at all. I mean, we've got plenty of power to run Android. Here's some 4K video playback, really smooth. 4K 60 HDR right out of HDMI on this unit. And I'll tell you, I've had much better luck in Android running 4K videos over something like Linux, at least at the time of making this video. And with this SoC, we've got a pretty modern Mali GPU. It's the G610, so native Android gaming is really smooth. Genshin Impact, 60 FPS, medium settings, fully playable. And I am using a mapper right now, so I can use a controller with the Android version of Genshin Impact. Personally, I like using Mantis Buddy. Emulation is also really great on this board in Android and Linux. Here's some PSP using PPSSPP, 3x resolution, Vulcan backend. We've got one of the harder ones to emulate, Chains of Olympus. And since we're able to upscale this game to 3x, the easier to emulate PSP games can go up to 5 and 7x. It really depends on what game you're running. GameCube and Wii emulation is still a bit hit or miss on this board. I do get some stutters here and there, but even with something like F-Zero GX, at least on the first couple tracks, we get a pretty smooth frame rate. Now going over to one of the harder to emulate tracks, Fire Field, kind of falls on its face, but overall not bad for GameCube and Wii on a single board computer. But I gotta say, the most impressive thing about the Kados Edge 2 is PS2 emulation. Personally, I prefer running it in Android, but we can also run this in Linux. I'm using EtherSX2. We've got Gran Turismo 4, 2.5x resolution upscale using the Vulkan backend. Very smooth, totally playable, and I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Even something like God of War 2 for PS2 runs really well at 1x resolution. In Linux, I've actually been able to take this up to 1.5x using OpenGL. But still, when it comes down to it, I like doing emulation in Android on the Arcade 3588. It's just a personal preference. And speaking of Linux, we do have a few different distros that we can run on this board. Personally, I prefer using Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop. And this also supports alt mode, so if you do have a monitor that supports USB Type-C video in and power out, all you'll need is a single cable to get this up and running, also known as single cable operation mode. And yeah, I have created a full video kind of showing this board off running Ubuntu as an everyday desktop PC. Now, if you're a professional and you need a lot of GPU and CPU power, then I wouldn't recommend a single board computer as your everyday desktop. But if you're somebody who just kind of uses it for web browsing, video playback, email checking, document editing, 1080p video editing, and even some light photo editing, this little board works really well. I mean, I'm surprised by how much power the RK3588 can put out. And with the distros we have available for the Kados Edge 2, we've got a very stable platform to work with here. 
But that's going to wrap it up for my first look at the Edge 2 ARM PC Pro. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave some links in the description. You can head over to the website and see what they're offering right now for this. And I'll also leave some links to other videos I created on the original Edge 2. It wasn't with the kit or the case or anything like that, but you're going to get the same kind of performance. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.